Well, we've just picked him up again. He's come across the drainage line and then he turned back sort of towards the west, which was unusual. He was calling here, that's how we found him again. And here he is, actually, uh, we saw a kudu running for its life as well, uh, which obviously the lion wasn't particularly interested in. The kudu went off in here, didn't even bother to alarm call. And then Mfumo started making his call. Uh, I'm very good at doing a lion call. Here it goes, are you ready? It goes like this. Good, eh? Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the lion. Sounds exactly like that. If you've never heard a lion call, that's what it sounds like. It obviously doesn't sound anything like that. But we'll wait for him to demonstrate it. Ahmed, you're wondering uh, what... Um, <laughs> if I had an alarm call, what would it sound like? I think it would sound like the standard issue human alarm call. Uh, it would sound like screaming. Ah! Lion! Ah! Ah! Lion! Sound something like that. Fresh lion tracks on the road here. And you can see it's quite interesting there. We've just gone round the puddle, and around the puddle he has gone too. And so his tracks go down the road, and then suddenly, if you only see them at the puddle, they're facing that way because he's wanting desperately not to get mud in between his, his toes. And so if you just came across those tracks and you hadn't seen the ones before or aft, you'd think he would be headed off in there, and you'd probably wander off and spend ages looking around there. Go, Mike. Mike, I told you that you need to come to Weaver's Nest, Weaver's Nest. So he's heading straight south. Let me just turn the car off a bit, because I'm really hoping he's going to call again before he disappears to the south of us. Now, Sandy, a very good one from you about how long the scent lasts when animals mark their territory. Well, I've, I can't smell his, so I don't know. But it lasts a while. They can pick it up on the bushes probably for weeks after it's been laid there, as long as there's no rain. Now, obviously, we've had quite a lot of rain of late, and that means their scent has been washed off. And so they often will patrol again like he's doing now. We're just going to let Chris go in front because he hasn't had much of a sighting. And then we'll follow behind him. Chris is guiding out of Chuma at the moment. So if you're wondering what that vehicle is doing, uh, those are people on safari, which of course is what you are doing basically in a virtual way. We'll try and catch up with him again, and so we're not behind the vehicle entirely. And as Megan, who is uh, directing us today, says, as we play hopscotch, let's head across to Byron, who is currently apparently trying to escape via the air. And this coalition of four, the Birmingham boys, dominates two prides. Tell you, it's been so long since I've seen a lion. I've been trying to take photographs of this chap, despite the fact that the light is flat and fairly hopeless for that sort of thing. There he's calling. A kind of nondescript call. Lovely. Just looking up at some other safari goers. 
Wondering what they taste like? No, he's not really wondering what they taste like. And Chris, you're wondering if the brothers join up to hunt. No, you know, normally they don't. Normally they join up if there's a fight, uh, but most of the time, you know, Chris, they don't do a huge amount of hunting. They will hunt, but they'll hunt alone. They'll hunt, often it's two and two together, you know, sort of patrolling the area, and if they have a hunting opportunity, then they will take it. But a male lion is, of course, the greatest scavenger out here. There is nothing more effective at scavenging than a male lion. And so they will steal from other lions, they'll steal from hyenas and wild dogs and leopards. Mostly, of course, they steal from lionesses. So although they're very effective hunters if they want to, they often don't do much hunting at all. Right, we'll get a view of him coming down through here. I hope, watch out everybody, watch your heads. And of course, there's a lot of moisture all on the bushes, so you'll get wet. Hold on. Okay, now be quiet. He's going to come right past us. He's just going to come wandering past us over here, I hope. Sorry, there's a rather nasty bush in the way. Okay, apparently Byron has got something extremely exciting. Let's go to him.